Um, so you heard from Eugenia, and Eugenia talks about um, building these large applications and the need for a large infrastructure, system support to be able to execute these large infrastructures. So our next speaker, Karen Wotney, um, is going to tell you a little bit about, build some more about these kinds of large systems, specifically things you have heard about today called big data systems. And uh, Karen has actually, um, she has had an interesting uh, trajectory coming here. She grew up in France, went to school in France. Then she went to um, get her master's at the Hebrew University in Israel. And between her master's and starting her PhD, she worked for three years at Intel. Um, what did you work on? Software, we developed Bipro, AMT technology. So it's uh, the technology which allows you to take control of your machine via the hardware and not via regular software. So system Z stuff, as you can see. So um, after her master's and working in Intel for a while, Karen went back to a PhD at the Hebrew University. And while she was starting her PhD in doing big data related topics, she decided to come over here to work with the very well-known faculty in big data, Mike Carey. And so she's <coughs> going to tell us a little bit about cloud computing, big data, and all of the challenges that are associated with building these large, complex systems. Thank you, Naomi. Okay. Hi. It's a privilege to have you all gathered here today. Thank you for coming and welcome. My topic of research is performance and optimization of big data systems. Big data systems need to crunch terabytes and sometimes petabytes of data per day. They need to perform well. This is crucial for our industry, for our business intelligence, for our defense, our healthcare, and of course our research. Big data is voluminous, and it also has various forms. It has the structured data, which has been processed on relational databases. It has semi-structured data, which are, uh, for example, XML. And it has unstructured data, which is the latest form. So data crunching is difficult. Who here has been taking CS122C, by any chance? So there are three courses, CS122, A, B, and C. Um, you will. It's a good course to take. Yeah, <laughs> it's an excellent course. And it, it will expose you to the problem of the field. And graduate schools give you the opportunity to become data experts. So, oh, so on one hand, the field has been studied for 30 years. So you have a lot to catch up on. On the other hand, with new means to communicate, there is an ocean of topics to tackle. <laughs> For example, graph processing. Social medias model users and their connection in the form of graph. And processing graph is different than processing data on relational databases. On top of that, it requires better, smarter, and more performance systems. So who are the main drivers of this field? We all know them. It's Google, Facebook, Twitter, but also a myriad of startups. Having a PhD in the field of data does not only allow you to be a user of these complex systems, it also allows you to work and to contribute on the development of these systems. Ultimately, you can also choose to remain in the academia <coughs> and, and with a PhD, do have a dream career, but the spots are limited. <laughs> now, what about big data at UCI? So in my team, we have developed a big data system in-house called Asterix DB. Um, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, as students, it allows you to become more familiar with the architecture, with the complex architecture of these systems. Basically, you have a query language, which has statements. These are translators into a logical plan, a physical plan, and a runtime plan. And optimization for these plans is required so your system is as performed as it can be. Development in the research environment is quite unique in the sense that your feature and your progress can be immediately merged into the branch of your, of your code base. So um, many, many more efforts would have to be invested for you to have that impact in a company. On top of that, as part of your graduate school, 
You can also do internships at Google. Oops. Uh, it's coming up. Oops. Oh, sorry. Um, so you can do internships at Google, at Facebook, at Twitter. For some reason, the slide with all the names that come up, but whatever. Um, and these come in. <laughs> <laughs> you can all the other stuff up. <laughs> and these companies have hundreds of thousands of machines. Now, this is not a configuration that is accessible at university, but gaining this education and doing a, deg a grad degree will provide you with the tools and the knowledge to become great contributors for these teams. Another thing which is captivating as part of these internships is to see what are the needs outside. It gives you insights as to what are interesting research projects. So when you come back from these internships, you can pick up better your next chapter. I did a, an internship at EMC, and it has it had a huge impact on my research. It's actually via a continuation of this internship that I arrived to UCI. Now, doing research for real needs is incredible because there is a large community who is interested in your work. <coughs> it allows you to develop contact and network. On top of that, the fact that you'll be doing um, a I'm jumping back and forth on my topic, but when you be doing an internship, it allows you to stick your feet in the water, trying to realize, am I more suited for a large company or for a startup? Do I like to work in this configuration, in, in a larger team? And, it, and it's, it's helping you to do a better job hunting once you finish your graduation. I would strongly recommend you to keep a blog with your development, your contributions, even at the undergrad level. It allows you to exchange ideas, and it's great for collaborations later. One of the exciting things that I find about, about graduate school is the fact that the, the conferences, you're, you're trying to describe your work at best. You, you are uh, having these peak periods of stress, um, making it for a deadline, you, you have to put all your knowledge and li in a limited space, it's a very difficult exercise. But you're very happy once your paper has been accepted. And the conferences are a great place to um, extend your network and make contact. If you are interested in data processing, then I warmly recommend you to go to CS122, A, B, and C, and talk to Professor Carey. Uh, he has research projects even small research project that could be an introduction into the field. Thank you for listening, and I hope this has given you more to think about on how graduate school might interest you. I'd also be happy to answer your question later. <coughs>